Hi and welcome to Column, Addition and Subtraction. Before we start, a reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video. Check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So we're going to begin with addition and we have um, in this question we have 18 plus 35, we have 274 plus 68 and we have 2907 plus 99. Now in each case what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, write out the first number which in this case is 18 but then I need to make sure that I line up the units in this number so the unit in 18 is 8 the unit in 35 is 5 and so underneath I'm going to make sure that the 8 and the 5 are lined up and the 3 is going to go in front and this is going to be added and therefore I'm going to write a little plus and draw a line underneath and what we always do we must start from the furthest right hand side when we are doing our additions and subtractions we always begin at the uh, at the lowest uh, the lowest place value and so we're going to begin with 8 plus 5 now if we do 8 plus 5 we get 13 now what we need to do here because we've got 13 which is a two digit number I'm going to write down the unit, which is the 3, but I'm going to carry over the 1 into the next column because that was a 10 that we've just uh, created, and so it goes into the 10s column. 1 plus 1 plus 3, well, that is 5. And so 18 plus 35 is 53. Next, if we're looking at 274 plus 68, well, I'm going to begin with the number 274. But again, I need to think about my units. The unit is the 4 and the unit is the 8. And therefore, the 8 must line up with the 4. And in terms of the 10s, the 6 and the 7 are our 10s, so they should line up. And we put, uh, put our add sign and a line underneath. And again, we're going to start at the furthest right-hand side. So we've got 4 plus 8. 4 plus 8 is 12. And so again, I'm going to write down the unit, which is the 2. I'm going to carry the 1 into the 10 columns. And then I'm going to add those together. So 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 6 is 14. And so I'm going to place a 4 in that column. And I'm going to carry another 1 into the next. Now at this point, I've got 1 plus 2, and then I've got a gap. Now that gap is actually just a zero because we have zero hundreds so one plus two plus zero is three i have three hundred and forty two and that is my answer in the last question here i have two thousand nine hundred and seven plus ninety nine so the first number is two nine zero seven i'll begin with that and in this number the units well it is this seven and this 9 so they need to line up in terms of the tens it is the 0 and this 9 so the 0 and 9 must line up we'll draw our line and we'll put our plus sign we're now going to add together again from the furthest right hand side so 7 plus 9 is 16 we write down the 6 and we carry the 1 1 plus 0 plus 9 well that is 10 and so I'm going to write down a 0, but bring the 1 into the next column. I've now got 1 plus 9, and if you want to, you can add a 0 in here. 1 plus 9 plus 0, that is 10 again. So I'll write down the 0 and carry the 1. And then that is 1 plus 2 plus 0 again. 1 plus 2 plus 0 is 3. Our answer is 3006. Next, we're going to look at subtraction. And again, I want to begin with the first number. So it's 35 take away 18. So I'm going to write down the 35 first. And then I'm going to make sure that I line up my units. So the units are 5 and 8. And so the 8 must be beneath the 5. The 10s are the 3 and the 1. And so the 1 must be lined up with the 3. But this time, I am subtracting. But again, just like we did with the addition, we're going to begin at the furthest right-hand side. And I'm going to do 5 take away 8. Now, if I do 5 take away 8, I would end up with a negative number, which makes this, uh, this quite difficult. And so what we actually have to do 
is we have to use one of the tens. And so instead of using the 30 here, I'm going to take a 10 from that to add to the five. So now I'm actually doing 15 take away eight. And 15 take away eight, that is a positive number. It is seven, and so we can write that down. Now, because I've used that 10 up in, uh, in the 15, I'm now actually just doing two take away one in the next uh, column. So two take away one is one. And so 35 take away 18 is 17. Let's try that again for 274. Now 274 take away 68. Now again, our units are four and eight. So they must line up. So I must have the eight underneath the four. My tens are the seven and the six. And so they must line up and I'm going to subtract. If I do this again, I'm going to begin at the furthest right hand side, four take away eight. Well, that would be a negative value because four take away eight will be negative four. And I don't like to have that negative. So I'm going to uh, use one of the numbers from the 10 column. I'm going to take that down to just be six. But now I have 14. I'm going to do 14 take away eight. 14 take away eight is six. Now in the next column, I'm doing six take away six. Well, six take away six is zero. So that is absolutely fine. Lastly, I'm doing two take away a blank. Now that blank, again, we could fill in with a zero because it means there are zero hundreds in the number 68. And so I'm doing two take away zero is two. And so 274 take away 68 is 206. And then lastly, we have two, nine, zero, seven, and we are subtracting 99. Now again, we need to make sure our units are lined up. So seven and nine need to be lined up. And then our tens, the zero and another nine. They must be lined up together. Now in this question, the first thing I'm going to do, starting from the right hand side, is seven take away nine. Now again, seven take away nine will be a negative number because the number on the top is smaller than the one underneath. And so we would need to borrow. But the next number along is a zero, which means we have nothing to borrow from. And so we actually now need to do a second borrow. I'm going to borrow from the nine. I'll make that an eight. And it now creates 10 on the tens column. But I need to borrow from that. So if I take one from the 10, it now becomes nine. But the one now joins the seven to make 17. 17, take away nine. Well, that is a subtraction I can do. It is eight. Next, I've got nine take away nine. Well, that is zero. In the next column, it's eight take away a blank. So again, we could fill that in with a zero. The same here. Eight take away zero is eight. And two take away zero is two. And so the answer would be 2,808. And we're going to end with um, adding and subtracting with decimals. Now with this, the key point here is that when we line up our digits, it is the decimal point which must always line up. If you want to think about it as a little snowman, you always want the, snow, uh, the little uh, piece of coal all in a perfectly straight line on your snowman. It is the same with our decimals when we are adding and subtracting. And so with 7.5, that is where I'm going to begin, 7.5. But now I need to make sure that my decimal point lines up. So in 3.6, it was 3.6. And then what we also need to make sure is that when we give our answer, that decimal point remains in the same location. So always in a perfectly straight line. So then we are going to just start again from the furthest right hand side in terms of adding together. So five plus six. Five plus six is 11. And so we write down the one and we carry the 10. One plus seven is eight plus three is 11. So I write down the one and if I carried the one, it would come to here. Maybe one plus zero plus zero. I can just write that straight down. It is 11.1. In 63.6 plus 3.7, well, let's write down the 63.6. Now again, we need to make sure that our decimal point is lined up. 
and also lined up in our answer. So the 3.7, well that is the 3 here and the 7 here. When we add together from the right hand side, 6 plus 7 is 13. So we have the 3 and carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 3 is 7. And finally 6 plus, well again this is a 0, so 6 plus 0 is 6. So I get 67.3. And then finally, I have 70.4, and I'm adding 5.99. So again, I'm just going to make sure that my decimal points are all lined up. Now this is 5.99. Now this is a little different to what we've seen, because now we don't actually have a number at the top, but that, uh, to add to the 9, but that is also a 0, because if there is a gap, it means that um, there are no hundredths in this case, so we can just call it f uh, point 0.40. Zero. And so 0 plus 9 is 9, 4 plus 9 is 13, and so I'm going to carry over the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 5 is 6, and 7 plus, again, as a 0, 7 plus 0 is 7. And so we have 76.39. In terms of subtraction, we're going to look at it in exactly the same way. So 7.5, and keeping our decimal points lined up, so that's going to be 3.6. We're going to have a subtraction, and we're going to do exactly the same. Starting from the right-hand side, 5 take away 6. Well, again, the number at the top is smaller than the number at the bottom, and therefore I'm going to have to borrow. And so I've got 15 take away 6, well, that is 9. And then 6 take away 3, that is 3. And so 7.5 take away 3.6 is 3.9. 63.6 take away 3.7. Again, I'm going to keep everything lined up. And so this is 3.7 subtracted. And so again, we start from the furthest right hand side we're going to do six take away seven well the number at the top is smaller than the number at the bottom so i'm going to have to borrow so that makes that a two and it creates 16 so 16 take away seven is nine next we're going to do two take away three but again the number at the top is smaller than the number at the bottom so i'm going to have to borrow again and that becomes five this now becomes 12 so 12 take away three is nine and then it's five take away this blank so it must be five take away zero five take away zero is 5, so we have 59.9. Lastly, we have 70.4 take away 5.99. Now again, I just need to make sure that all of my decimal points are lined up, and so the number was 5.99. And so here, we have that same problem again. We have a gap here. We've got something take away 9. Well, that something is 0. And so, in the same way, we're going to have to do 0 take away 9. But I can't do that. I'm going to have to borrow in order to make that 3 and that 10. So 10 take away 9 is 1. Next, it will be 3 take away 9. But I can't do that, so I'm going to have to borrow. But the next number is a 0. So I'm going to have to do a double here. So this is going to become 6. This will become 10. But we'll borrow 1 from it to make 9. I've now got 13 take away 9 is 4. 9 take away 5 is 4 and 60 take away the blank which is 0 60 take away uh, 6 take away 0 is 6 and so our answer is 64.41 and so lastly we come to the exam question and this came from the NXL paper in June 2017 and it was foundation paper 1 and it says the farmer buys uh, two packets of bread rolls costing £1.50 for each packet one bottle of ketchup costing £1.60 and three packets of sausage. Farmer pays with a £10 note, she gets 30p change. Farmer works out that one packet of sausages costs £2.30. Is farmer right? Um, you must show you're working uh, to get your answer. So, in this case, what we need to be thinking about is what the actual costs would be. So, the first thing I'm actually going to look at here is the £10 that she spent and the 30 pence change that she received. Well, if she got 30p change, that means she must have spent £9.70. 
So that is a key value. We know she spent £9.70. Now, what she knows that she has bought is two packets of bread rolls, each costing £1.50. And so 1.50. But she bought two of those. So let's put 1.50 again. Then she also bought a bottle of ketchup at £1.60. And you'll notice as I'm writing these, I'm keeping all my decimal points lined up. And then um, we can find out how much that costs in total. So the uh, th three values that we knew she had definitely bought. So I'm going to add each of those together. 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. 5 plus 5 plus 6 is 16. So I'm going to carry over the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. And so she has definitely spent £4.60. Now she says that one packet of sausages costs £2.30. But she bought three packets. And so let's find out how much that would cost. So £2.30 plus £2.30 plus £2.30. Well, if we add all of those together, 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9. And 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. So she thinks she spent £6.90 on sausages. Well, let's add together the two prices that we have. We have £4.60 plus £6.90. If I add those together, I get 0 plus 0 is 0. 6 plus 9 is 15, with 1 carried over. 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 6 is £11.50. Now, if the sausages cost £2.30 each, then she would have spent £11.50. We know that is not the case because she actually spent £9.70. And so the answer is no.